What can we learn in Book 9? Why is Book 9 there? How do they understand Achilles' problem? Second, what do they offer to get him back into his combat or overcome his problem? Two things. Nowhere in the book do we get a picture of the depth, the depth of Achilles' problem. Here's where we get it, right? The depth of his problem. How are you going to do it? Well, they all come to the tent where Achilles is, right? Agamemnon has made his announcement, and then the following takes place. So, number one, what's interesting about this very curious work, which, you know, I think singularly is very important, is this question. <coughs> Quite remarkable. Well, we got four big issues. We want to see the depth of Achilles' problem. Okay, let's describe the way they understand Achilles' problem. What can we learn from it? Right. As a consequence, what do they offer? Strategy or whatever it's going to be. Then we want to see his response to it. While we're doing that, we want to deal with this issue. How do these men deal with one another's plans, suggestions, and advice? Why? They're judging the reasoning that each of them is using. The whole critique it's judging the arguments each one is giving, the logos. Each one has a point of view. Huh? Look, look, each one has a point of view. Yes. He has to answer each one, and they then turn against one another, and therefore, you know what we can learn? how to judge one another's advice, suggestions, in life at important, utterly important episodes. It's a way of reason. That's what we're going to get. So, who wants to take a look at Agamemnon? 
That's the way it starts, doesn't it? Right, the story is out. Defeat. It's over. Agamemnon is going to give his analysis. He's going to unfold what's on his mind, what he's been doing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. right. What brought him to wake up? Each one of these people is going to wake up in a different way. Right. He says, hey, I'll tell you what, I woke up. Hmm. Friends, leaders of archives, all my captains, Zeus, Cronides, entangled me in folly to my undoing. Wayward God, he promised solemnly that I should not sail away before I stormed the inner town of Troy. Crookedness, duplicity, I see now. He calls me to return to Argos, beaten after these many losses. You know what? That must be his will and his good pleasure. And who knows? Who knows why? And who knows why? Yeah. Many a great town's height has he discovered and will destroy being supreme in power. Enough. Now let's act on what I say. Retreat. We cannot any longer hope to take Troy. Diomedes gets up. You know what's wrong with you, says Diomedes? You got two gifts. One, you got the gift of being a lord, and the other is you got a personal failing. Hey. They can take on the king, the head of the army. Here's Diomedes. Right? He says, look, I hear what you're saying. I'll tell you what's wrong with you. Doesn't he? Hmm. Straightforward. You've been given two gifts. You know what you lack? You lack any staying power. You can't stay and fight to the end. You don't have any staying power. That's what's wrong with you. You're out. You failed. Right? You lack it. You want up some. Right. That's just your problem. Yeah. Now look here. In your case, the son of crooked-minded Kronos gave you one gift and not both, a staff of kingship, honored by all men, but no staying power, the greatest gift of all. Is that your translation? Why is it so different? You know what? Take off. Go on home. You know what I'm going to do? I'll stay here and fight alone. Until we see the destiny, the end of Ilion. We came here under God, and by God, we're going to stay. <laughs> right? That's it. He says, hey, go. <laughs> go on, get the hell out of here. Right? <laughs> right? Go. Straightforward. Yeah. Now Nestor comes in. The guest? <laughs> Uh, 
Hey, you know what? People really like you, says uh, Nestor. Actually, you know, you're pretty unusual for your age. No true Achaean will contradict you, but you know what? You still don't push to the end. sums it up. What is it to be a warrior? Come on. How does, see, Nestor is saying, I'll tell you the truth about it, see. You are not a warrior. That's your problem. I'm, it's not because you have no staying power. You know what? You're not a warrior. I'll tell you what a true warrior is. And that's one of the great quotes in Homer. Right? What is the face of a true warrior? What is it? I don't know. Not a true warrior. <laughs> I know I need to read it. It's terrible. <laughs> what do you make of it? Look here. I'm at uh, about uh, 65, 70. Book 9. For my own part, I'll tell you what, I'm older, and therefore, you know what, I can drive the point home. I got a right. I'm older, therefore I can tell you off. No one will show contempt for what I say, and surely not you, Agamemnon, our commander. Here it is. Alien to clan and custom and hearth fire is he who longs for war, heartbreaking war with his own people. <coughs> what kind of a, what is it to be a warrior? Alien to... You're an alien. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're an alien to everything that's sacred and home. Right? You can't stand being at home. Right? You gotta go to war. Okay. Longs for war, even though it's heartbreaking. You know what my duty is? I'll tell you what my job is. One of the great lines in here. I serve wine. I know every day a ship comes full of wine. Every single day for nine years, they can expect a boat coming in with plenty of wine. Right? And I, me, I pass it around. <laughs> yeah. This is my duty. No difficulty. Your huts are full of wine, brought over daily in our ships. All of this is the provender, provider for guests at your journey. So you know what? We can drink. Tomorrow's war. We're going to lose. Okay, so that's life. That's stuff. Right. Take a look at the enemy. They're all close by. Fires all over the place, ready to combat. Okay. No panic. Therefore, they serve. Each man's hand went out upon the meal, and when he had driven hunger and thirst away, old Nestor opened up their deliberations. Nestor, whose counsel had seemed best before, point by point weaved his argument. 
Ah, right, point by point. The rules of rhetoric, here they come. He puts it rather interesting, doesn't he? He says, Lord du Zeus, you're in charge. He put you keeping your staff in president that you might counsel for your men. You know what? You should be first in discourse. But you know what? Be attentive to what other people may propose. To act on it if uh, he speaks for the good of all. So whatever he may initiate, action is yours. You want to know what I want you to do, says Nestor? Right? Don't close your ears. Keep open for what to hear. Right? That's what Nestor says, right? Hey, let me give you advice. Right? Listen to each one of these people that are coming. Each one has a certain plan of action. You know what your job is? Settle. Don't run. Stay. Listen to these plans. Because it's your job to act. We'll tell you what's the best plan. We'll give you it all. Oh, you're in charge. Now let's stay. Now, <coughs> he goes through, right? He now goes back and says, I'll tell you what I owe Achilles and what I'm going to give Achilles if he gets into combat. He's got at least 12 things. Got a picture of them all? No. This is what I'm going to do. One, two, three, four. Got them all? What a list. And it shows his character, too. Look what he's saying. Hey, spoils? I'll tell you what I'm going to give him. I'll load his ship with bars of gold and bronze. He may choose among Trojan women 20. Most lovely, that is, after Helen. 20 he gets. The most lovely ones. Right? Well, we'll return flowing with good things of the earth. You know what? I'll adopt the guy as my son. Right? He's a lord. He's king over the whole land. Right? I'll adopt him. He'll be my son. And I got three daughters. You can pick any one of them. And I'll, you know what? I'll throw in bridal gifts. I'll throw in a dowry that'll baffle everybody. Right? I'll give uh, seven flourishing strongholds. I'll give him each one of them. Then he mentions all where they are and the vineyards and the meadowlands, all near the, the sea. And these lands are men who have great flocks and herds. Right? They'll pay tithes and sumptuous honor. By God, they're prospering and they'll carry out their plans and you'll profit. <laughs> so, you know what? So let Achilles bow to me, considering that I hold higher rank and I claim the precedence of age. Right? There it is, whole bunch, right? So go tell him. So you guys get out of here, go tell Achilles, we'll wrap this up. Well, he's still holding that age. Well, directed that's quite a payoff for recognition. Mm. But, I mean, not that we should value things, such things so highly. No. Right. <laughs> no. Yeah. You're right, though. It does want to be recognized. Mm -hmm. It's just 
it just seems excessive to me. You know? yeah, but the killing would <laughs> probably... How much you got to give, right? Well, because it only took a, a paragraph for a... Uh, so, to so what are they going to do in order to have a good discussion? Right? They're all going to meet Achilles. What are they going to do? What is Achilles going to do? Have a feast and wine. Have a feast and wine. Right? <laughs> Every, right? They, they have their full... Right? That's what he says. They have their full, they've drunk enough, they sit back, and now the discussion begins. At the right time. Huh? Right? Feast, wine, sure. talk. And he's got to see. <laughs> Look at the way he described it, right? Some people can put it away. I can do it. This he did with meat tossed in the fire. Then each man's hand went out upon the meal. When they had put their hunger and thirst away, Aeneas nodded silently to Phoenix. Hey, Prince of Decius caught the nod. He filled a cup of wine, lifted to Achilles, and said, I got news for you, Achilles. We've had enough feasting, that concerns us, but now, you know, we have to face ruinous defeat. That's what we got to face. So what's his argument? got a simple one, doesn't it? Avoid defeat. Men are afraid. It's the last battle. They're surrounded. Right up to the ocean, I mean to the sea. Frenzy fills them up. Rouse yourself if even at this hour you'll pitch in for the Achaeans and deliver them from Trojan havoc. Hey, years to come, they'll remember you. While there's time, better think about how to avoid this evil. Let's go. He goes on, right? My dear lad, good old father Peleus, put it in his farewell, sending you out from Pythia to take ship with Agamemnon. Now, notice now, this is a great, beautiful description of his vision of Achilles. Now, as to fighting power, child, said your father, he's reminding him. Hera and Athena wish, they'll give it. Hey, control your passion. Though and your proud heart for gentle, gentle courtesy is a better thing. <clears throat> Break off insidious qualms. Have you forgotten it? You forgot your father's advice, kid. Wake up. So get over your anger. 
I'll tell you what, Agamemnon will match his change of heart, but I'll tell you what he'll do. And what's interesting is the difference between what Agamemnon said a moment ago, right? And what Odysseus says. Right? He adds to it. Consider the numbers, careful with numbers. Seven, ten, twelve, seven, twenty. Here's the list. Seven new tripods, ten bars of gold, twenty shining cauldrons, twelve horses, thoroughbreds. They won prizes. Hey, they'll give you seven women. All household handicraft, women of Lesbos, chosen when you, uh, you yourself took lesbian town. You know, they outshine all of womanhood and beauty. These will give you. One more. Hey, you know what? He'll give you back uh, Poseidon's daughter. Concerning <coughs> a solemn oath, you know what? He left her alone for all these years, even though it's the custom to sleep with men and women. These are all yours at once. The immortals grant us the pillaging of Priam's town. Then you can come forward, take the spoils, load your ship, let's go. You'll be his own adopted son. You can take on one of his daughters. Take him wherever you want, by the way. You don't have to pay anything. Right? You got those seven flourishing strongholds? They'll pay all kinds of uh, honors and paybacks. You'll win. Hey, even if you hate Agamemnon, put it aside with all these gifts. The armies and rags in battle, these will honor you as gods are honored. What glory you may win. Right? We know that Hector will never put himself in range for you. That's his weakness. You got him. I'll tell you what, says Achilles, that sounded like a pretty good idea. But you know what? I owe you a straight answer. And I'll tell you how it's going to end. See how they're talking? Straight forward, back and forth. It's great. <laughs> so take a look at the answer while I get something. Achilles. All right, who's going to answer him? All right. I'll answer him, and then so doing, I'll answer the others simultaneously, and that's going to leave Phoenix in the background. Okay, how does he pull it off? What does he say? I'll tell you what, you don't understand me. I'll tell you till you're straight. I hate as I hate hell's own gate, that man who hides one thought within him and while he speaks another. <laughs> what I shall say is what I see and think. I hate as I hate hell's own gate, that man who hides one thought within him while he <coughs> speaks another. That's that SOB Agamemnon. Right. <laughs> right. I'll tell you what he's done in the past. He's a crook. Right. He takes away most of the spoils of battle. I fight, he steals. 
Well, I'll tell you what, what he did. From me alone, of all the Achaeans, he preempted her. He holds my bride dear to my heart. I'll tell you what, let him sleep with her and enjoy her. That's what. Why should we fight the Trojans? Why did he raise an army, lead it here? For Helen? Tell you what, are you the only ones, is she the only ones who love uh, their wives? I don't think so. It's a great statement. Every sane, decent fellow loves his own and cares for her, as in my heart I love Brasides, though I want her by the spur. Now that, you know what? He took my prize. Tricked, defrauded me. Well, I'll tell you what, he can't change my mind. It's no use. Hector him? He never cared for a fight from the walls. His limit was the oak tree by the gate. <clears throat> when I was alone one day, he waited there, but barely got away when I went after him. <clears throat> now it's I who do not care to fight. Tomorrow, John? I'm taking off. I'm going to haul my ships and say goodbye to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> On the third day, I'll hit <coughs> home. Right? <laughs> right now, you know what I got? I'll take home gold, ready bronze, and women belted luxuriously and hoary iron. I don't know what a hoary iron is, by the way. <laughs> but I'll leave that go. All that came to me here. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to share one word of counsel with him. I'm not even going to talk to him. Not even going to act with him. He robbed me blind. Broke faith with me. No second chance for me to play the fool again. Once is enough. Not of his gifts outnumbered the sea sands, and all the dust grains in the world could Agamemnon ever appease me, not till he pays me back full measure, pain for pain, dishonor for dishonor. I wouldn't take his Take the daughter Agamemnon in their marriage. He's a jerk. <laughs> I'll not have her. I don't care what he pays. Let him find someone else. <clears throat> if you know me, I'm going to go home. You know what I'm going to do? I'll take the one I wish to be my wife. There, in my manhood. I have longed indeed to marry someone of congenial mind and take my ease in enjoying the great estate my father had acquired. What do you want? Peace. Congenial mind, right? Someone he can relate to, got a good mind. You know what? My mother told me all about what's going to happen if I stay. I'm dead. I could go home, live until old age, sell home. Therefore, I'll tell you what, you go tell the guy, you better save the uh, Achaean army, put them on ships, save the ships, save the army, get out of here. But I'll tell you what, as long as my anger holds, I'm out in the morning. Hey, Phoenix, stick around, load, lodge with us tonight. Then take ship and sail homeward in my side tomorrow. They were all silent.
Now Lord Phoenix comes up. Now he is quite a dude. What he does is quite remarkable. And here I want you to be careful to see whether or not the problem Achilles has may in fact be nothing other than the drama of Phoenix because Phoenix turns out to be the surrogate mother for Achilles. Here's your question. Does his early life at home with his parents parallel or is it the model of Achilles pathologus? Is he just living out what he's heard and what his, his mother, surrogate mother? Take a look. Line it up. Take a few minutes. Take a look at this paragraph. It's brilliantly constructed. Flawless. Put the whole drama of Achilles, look her, see? Here's Achilles. Here's Thetis, his mother. Right? Here's Agamemnon. Here's Achilles. In this whole story from Phoenix, is there a parallel for each one? And are the dynamics the same? Okay, take a look.
He didn't say it. He didn't say it. Vengeance follows upon generations. He said it somewhere else. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. he's going to go through the um, he's going to go through the uh, the family history. And, uh, there's going to be some anger and some uh, hurt feelings and people not doing what they're supposed to do. Well, I keep trying to find out what it is. Uh, I see, it's all in the heart. I see the word heart so many times in this. It's like, going through here, all the quotes on heart in here. That like one on two on every page. Does he then give evidence that we can say he is the surrogate parent for Achilles? Yeah, you know that? Huh? I made you mine. Yes, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Unqualified? Overwhelming evidence. Huh? The overwhelming air evidence that he was a surrogate parent for Achilles. He knew nothing of war, he knew nothing of counsel, uh, reputation, how to speak among elder men when he left his town. And uh, he's that's, supposed to be the uh, guy to When he left, that's too old to be a surrogate parent. Now it was I who formed your manhood, handsome as a god's Achilles, I who loved you from the heart, for never in another's company would you attend a feast or dine in hall, never, unless I took you on my knees and cut your meat and held your cup of wine. Many a time you wet my shirt, he cupping wine bubbles in distress when you were small, patient, laborious. As a nurse, I had to be for you, bearing in mind that never would the gods bring into being any son of mine. <coughs> Godlike Achilles, you were the man child that I made my own to save me some day as I thought from misery. What's he, <laughs> what's he saying? Hey, Mark, what's he saying? I made you my own child. I made you all that you are now. This is uh, surrogate parents. I mean, emphatic about it. Now, <laughs> this translation says, so, it was, so that it was you, God like Achilles, I made my own child. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got that, how is Phoenix's past parallel to the dilemma that Achilles is in? Point by point. Right. Well, yeah, Agamemnon would relate to Phoenix's father. Right. Come do the whole thing, line it up, one by one. He says, ruin follows his path and path. I mean, hope, the only thing we're going, we're going for ruin, the only thing we have now is prayer. But then he goes ahead and he tells a, a, a fable. Yes. And, and the fable is uh, a, a net demonstration of what the prayer is supposed to prove, which is that... Um, uh, Does Phoenix's mother play a role similar to Achilles' mother? Right, right. She pits, yeah. she pits him. Achilles' mother pits him against Agamemnon, and Phoenix's mother pits him against his father. Is the same language used in both cases? She drives um, Venus and Milagros into action. Pleading on the knees and yeah. the, all of that. Mm -hmm. Is that all similar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Similar, yes. Well, <laughs> it can't be identical. Are they functioning in a similar way? That's the issue. Forever taking away means of intrigue. 
Hmm. Making them. Well, Thetis takes Zeus's knees, right? She just gets pissed off and curses. You know, Does he say there was nothing but rage in his soul? Like Achilles? Yes or no? Where would you start? At what line? Um, yeah. 447. When you started with, I went north to avoid a feud with Father Amnitor, mm. Armenides. Yes. His anger against me rose over a fair-haired slave girl whom he fancied. Without respect for his own wife, my mother. Mother embraced my knees and begged that I make love to this girl so that afterwards she might be cold to the aging man. <laughs> right? Good old mom. <laughs> right? She knew how to deal with life. Yeah. Right? Sacrifice. <laughs> my son. Yeah, you're forgetting the brutal part about how he screwed his girlfriend. Um, I did it. My father guessed the truth at once and cursed me. <laughs> praying the ghostly furies that no son of mine should ever rest upon his knees. A curse fulfilled by the immortals. Lord Zeus of under gloom and cold Persephone. I plan to put a sword at him. Same as it? Yes. Right? He's on a sword. What's the blood? <laughs> and would have had not some god unstrung my rage. Is that what Athena did? Yeah. Ah. Exactly. Reminding me of country gossip and frowns of men. I shrank from being called the parricide among the Achaeans. But from that time on, I felt no tie with home, no love for lingering under the rooftop of a raging father. Rage. Our household, our neighbors, urged me to stay. They made a handsome feast to urge me to stay. Cattle were butchered, fat sheep, young porkers by the litter. Right? Rivers of wine drunk from the old man's store. Nine times they spent the, the night slept beside me, taking turns to watch, making sure I don't run away. Mm -hmm. But when the tenth night came, starless and black, I cracked the tight bolt of my chamber door, pushed out scaled the courtyard wall unseen by household men on watch or women slaves. Then I escaped, made my way through Hellas, where the dancing floors are wide. Yeah, that's the place. <clears throat> and then I met Achilles' father. He gave me welcome, as only a father would a son. He made me rich. He adopted me as a word, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you set it up, the parallel? Hey, to the degree there's a parallel, what was his problem? There it is. Right? There it is. Did that problem then shape, play a role in shaping Achilles' and so presence? Yeah, sure looks like it. Well, we got, we got a model. Yes, we have a story and we have to explain why the story is being told. I mean, who cares about you, Phoenix, in your history? And he's telling Achilles, hey, look here, let me remind <laughs> you of something. Is he laying it in front of him? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> in detail. Let me tell you about myself. In, in my relationship with you. <laughs> Achilles gets in, involved with Agamemnon over a uh, fair-haired princess, uh, just like um, uh, Phoenix when he left 
his father also had the problem of uh, a jealous mother and a fair haired princess, um, uh, both of which um, made it impossible for him to stay there. Uh, he, he lost the princess to the father, and then the mother. Uh, to what degree does Venus recognize, hey, you're not unusual. The whole bunch of people just like you who play the same game. Does he do that? Right? Does he do that? Hey, the problem you have? I know. A bunch of people just like you. <coughs> Nothing special. You think you're special? You know what they did? Some of the dopes held on to their anger and, and therefore they woke up at the last minute and joined the battle. They didn't get any loot, they didn't get any rewards, they didn't get any honor. So you know what? When they come charging along, you're going to go back into combat and you get nothing. Yep. Is that what he says? Yeah. Uh, that's right. So this is different if he you. Hey, until this moment, Achilles, I got news for you. 523. No one in the army took ill that you should suffer anger. None of them. We learned this from the old stories of how towering wrath <coughs> could overcome great men. But they were still amiable to gifts and to persuasion. <clears throat> Here is an instance I myself remember <coughs> I'll tell you, does he then give a beautiful case that parallels Achilles? Come on, second. Does he give another model? Second model. Yeah, he even cites a legal precedent. <laughs> legal he precedent. Says if a brother slayer um, uh, is willing to pay the price, that he's willing to go on living in the same land than the person. Like Nothing special. We all we all understand it. You can be at peace, and that's how we go around here. So act now. These get the the loot, and I'll tell you a story. Does he have a good story? Are they parallel? Come on, second. Great illustration of the point mm -hmm. of, of, of the, the struggle of Achilles again. Yeah. And it says uh, the guy's wife he treats him with tears, and that is what gets him to come around, and that parallel is uh, Patroclus. <coughs> Where's that? Uh, I, I don't, I'm just going to stop on that, but it's later in the speech. There's a line in here I want someone to help me with, okay? <clears throat> uh, I'm appealing to both men and women. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> It follows the lady Cleopatra. Mm -hmm. This lovely girl was born to Marapasse of ravishing pale ankles. Have any of you guys ever seen a ravishing pale ankle ankles of a girl? Yes. Mm. Brad. <laughs> the translation it has the daughter of sweet stepping Marbasa. How would a painter paint ravishing ankles of a woman? Like light coming off of them. Amy, do you have ankles? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yanni, does she have ravishing pale ankles? There, he said yes, that's it. <laughs> 
Isn't that a great line, though? I mean, Mala Agros, how parallel. Does everybody try to get him into battle? Is he in the same condition and place as Achilles? So then his wife stirred him to action and he went back and fought off the ruin. Quote, but his folks no longer care to award him gifts and luxuries. Yet even so he saves that terrible day. Oh, do not let your mind go you know, so far astray, Achilles. Let no malignant spirit turn you that way, dear son. You know what? It would be worse to fight for ships already set afire. <coughs> Wake up, value the gifts, rejoin the war. Achaeans after will give you great God's honor. But I'll tell you what, if you reject the gifts and then later enter the deadly fight, you know, you're not going to get anything. Even if you turn the whole tide of war. Then he changed it. She says he's going to stay there. Therefore, what does it look like? Can you pull it together? all of these stories and find parallels with our friend Achilles? Does, not, does Phoenix know it? It's does he line it up? It's rich with them. Yeah, yeah. He sees it. He sees it because of seeing that it's a problem. Hey, they know what a problem is? <laughs> he tells he's going to share it? I'll tell you what, I have the same problem you have. Yeah. And the problem you have a bunch of other people have. I'll give you a name to a whole bunch of people. But he doesn't realize that he's got a problem. Right, he, he, <laughs> right? It's public information. Who, Phoenix? Yeah, he keeps his world views right. <laughs> right, so what does Achilles do if you're following up to that point? What does he do? He says this is not the honor I want. It's, it's, well, I'm in no hurry to leave. He gives the line, the key line, in his pathologos. Mm. Really? given everything we know. But the great runner, Achilles, answered, Old Uncle Phoenix, bless you. That is an honor I can live without. Honored, I think I am, by Zeus's justice justice that will sustain me by the ships as long as breath is in me and I can stand. I got news for you. Here's another point. Ponder it well. Don't confuse my heart with lamentation for Agamemnon, whom you must not honor. You would be hateful to me, dear as you are, Loyalty should array you at my side in giving pain to him who gives me pain. 
Rule with me equally, share half my honor, but dump Agamemnon, don't give him any help. Achilles gives the sign to Patroclus, they all know they gotta go. Where was his battle news? And then we have Iaeus' appeal, right at about 620. He made a short and sweet statement, didn't he? This guy's down. He likes to leave. He's got that. He can't, he can't understand it. He says, I can't understand what you're doing. Cruel and in an un, un, unpeaceable rage the gods put in you for one girl alone. You know what? We offer seven beauties, many more besides. Come on, be gentler. Right? Kelly says, I got, come on. You don't understand. He makes the same appeal to Achilles as loyal to the other men. Now make, make, now make gracious the spirit within you. Respect your own house. See, yeah. we are under the same roof with you and the multitude of Danan. We who desire beyond all others to have your honor and love out of all of your kingdom. Right, right. Well, kind of a lot more noble take on it than... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's always, you know, and that's always in the background. Why don't you fight for your buddies? Mm -hmm. But um, it's not giving them this feel about the importance of taking prizes, uh, gifts. And then he changes again, and he even he even um, capitulates more. He says, blah blah blah. Hector comes all the way to the ships of the Myrmidons. And their shelter is slaughtering the Argives and shall darken them with fire our vessels. But around my own shelter, I think, and besides <laughs> my black ship, Hector will be held, though he be very hungry for battle. So he's saying that hmm, I might even have to hang around to protect my ships here. I just don't understand why he, how he how he was convinced to stay. Yeah. Or was it just, just, you know, he felt like, well, honor has finally come to me in, in a way I can appreciate. And um, that big boulevard has got nothing. Yeah. And he thinks he's got the deal made. Because Hector won't kill him. Yeah. But he says, hey, I'll tell you what. When they start burning down the ships around my hut, my black ship, I foresee for all his fury, Hector will break off combat. Uh, you know, to answer your question, David, I have something uh, which puzzled me earlier. He says in earlier that uh, about three, page? Uh, page 214, he says that now as he took my prize out of my hands, tricked and defrauded me, he did not tempt, he did not tempt me. I know him and he cannot change my mind. So I, I thought, well, it can't be Agamemnon that can't change his mind, but it looks like he may, it, it may leave it open to others. He said he knows Agamemnon and not even he, Agamemnon, can change his own mind? Uh, no, I just said that, uh, maybe a different translation. He did not tempt me. I know him, and he cannot change my mind. Let him take that thought, I guess, is with you. Since it's he can't change my mind, okay. he offers us all these gifts as if he can, but then Phoenix and A.S. come in and give other information other than the uh, gifts that Agamemnon suggest to change his mind. They certainly do. So I thought that that may be why he's backing away after um, Phoenix, gives his, Phoenix gives his presentation. Achilles is backing away? Well, he's staying. He's, he's not taking well, away. He's not leaving. Backing away from leaving. Yeah. 
to answer David's earlier question. Riddle. Another riddle for me. Was that was that resolved? Are you saying you have to resolve? back up arguments after? What they were saying? Did that resolve it? I don't know. I, I answered it for myself. Oh, okay. okay. I, I like that better. I don't know if it helped him. No. Wait, so what made him back off? Obviously, you read Agamemnon can't convince him, can't change his mind, but somehow the two speeches, the two later <coughs> speeches, did it. But that doesn't answer it. Okay. What, what is fundamentally then is Achilles' justification for playing the game he's in, doing what he's doing? What does he believe? What's his fundamental belief? Yeah, I was wondering what that was. <laughs> um, <coughs> faith here in the first paragraph. Pardon? In the first paragraph, um, he's talking about panic and some companion cold terror. That's where the Achaeans were. And um, just like when winds rise over the fishy sea and, and they blow from the great word and the crest and far across, uh, the salt water scatters the seaweed. In just that way, the heart and the breast of each Achaean was troubled. Heart. And then there are about 87 mentions of heart throughout the whole thing. Um, it seems like this is a place where uh, reason and, um, and, and strategy is given away from um, this kind of a anger, emotion, um, maybe even invention. Okay. How does he trump everyone in the book? By what position? By what view? That he's angry? He, he trumps all of these people by one statement. Yeah, I was wondering if it was that one statement. In this statement, he's different from everyone else in the book. What does he claim to know that puts him above everyone else? and gives him the justification from take, holding the position that he has and feeling triumphant about it. You read that one, honored I think I am by Zeus's justice. That's right. Yeah. Did you read that? Honored I think I am by Zeus's justice. Keep going. Justice that will sustain me by the ships. As long as breath is in me, I can stand. What is he climbing? on? Yeah, does he know the mind of Zeus? Come on, what is what is that claim? What does it involve? Come on, take a look at it. Honored I am by Zeus's justice. And that justice, you know, has a power. And it's going to sustain me as long as breath is in me. I'll be by the ships. Uh, 
Therefore, what's his view in respect to himself and Jews? Justifying what he's doing. And it will sustain him by the ships. Therefore, he's just justified in doing what he's doing and watching the whole army being destroyed. Wow. Right? There he is. Why? Hey, I'll change it. Honored I am by Jesus's son. <laughs> Jesus himself. Yeah, he thinks he can. He thinks his own shit don't stink because Zeus honors him, and he can just sit, do whatever the hell he wants. He changes his mind. He seems like he's changing his mind here. First, he says he's gonna leave in the morning. Then he says we'll talk about it. Okay. Then he's not just talking about hanging out by the ships and watching the whole thing go down in flames. Right? What would a Christian? Were they? Do you know any Christian who could say that? Oh yeah. And what would that mean if they were in battle? They'd be restored to wholeness. They would be restored to hold them. Yeah. Would, Joan of Arc. Their, uh, a Joan of Arc. Hmm. Honored, sustained. No. Justified in one's killing? Well, is that what he's doing? Yeah, he's just a kid. It'd be a great advantage in battle if you think that, you know, hey, but so this way they're going to honor me no matter what. You know? Does he therefore know about the state of mind of Zeus? Would you agree? Everywhere in the book. He's got right opinion. I don't know if he's got knowledge. Okay. <laughs> Would you agree? We can find certain lines in the book where people say, well, you know what? We don't know what Zeus is going to be doing, but we have to play our role. Does that theme repeat itself? Sure. sure, sure. How does that compare with this? Yeah, I, I, can, like, I can make him up for him. He's all over the place, right? Oh, Zeus has got me bad. Oh, no, he's out to get me, right? And he's got certainty. Well, certainty. Pardon? To, to, make, to answer the question you just asked, he's got <coughs> more certainty than those other people. Yeah, it's unfortunate that, that Zeus fills in all the options for him because now we can, we can say that, well, he's a man of providence and he, he, he's never going to have to uh, make, a, make an un... un irrational judgment again, but so many other people see so many other things and what you're doing, like it, it, D Diomedes again, you know, kind of pragmatic, right, right from the hip, he says right at the end, son of Atreus, most lordly and king of men, Agamemnon, I wish you had not supplicated the blameless son of Peleus with innumerable gifts offered. He's a proud man without the, uh, uh, with he is a proud man without this, and now you have driven him far deeper into his pride. Yeah. That's at the end of the book. New Year is an interesting word. You said this is equivalent to providence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? That's what he's saying. It's providential. But how is this honorable, though? I mean, to, because I'm, I'm, I'm um, tripped up because of what you mentioned at the beginning that. By withholding from battle, he's acting like a coward, Achilles. From whose viewpoint? <clears throat> you brought that up before. Okay. What's he saying? I'm honored by Zeus's justice. Right. You can call him a coward if you want. What does he know? <laughs> <laughs> what does he know? <coughs> he's, made, but he's, he's using that to justify anything he wants to do. No, no, no staying by the ships. Right, or if you want to do something else, he can say, I'm honored, right? He, can yeah. change, he starts changing his mind, right? Like, uh, he's the first says he's going to go home in the morning, when yeah. he says he's going to talk about it, and then he's saying, I'm going to stay on the church and watch the whole thing go, you know? Yeah, what does it then mean when he says, and, he continues it, that justice will sustain me by the ships? He's going to watch the ships burn down. Yeah, and he's still just. Even yeah. though he's act, acting in a manner well, we would think of. And he also knows that Hector is not going to kill him. Right, right, right. 
I know Hector. Right. We ain't got no fight. I didn't fight him. He knows like how it's gonna turn out, and he uses that to just be a jerk, right? Mm. It, there's a, a relationship between Zeus, I mean Achilles, and Thetis. She's a goddess. Agamemnon is not a product of uh, gods. Given no authority by Zeus, but he doesn't have sustaining power. But I'm thinking that. No, but he doesn't have the sustaining, sustaining power. power. So. So he's not he's not on the same cali on the same level because Achilles is a product of divinity in one level, Thetis. But I'm thinking that the way that Zeus, the way Agamemnon talks about Zeus early on, he's really angry and he's complaining. Blaming Zeus. That's not what Achilles does to any of the gods. He's not a, against the gods if he sees that there's a problem, as far as I can see. No, but different. any time that there is a problem, Agamemnon says, well, it's, you know, blame Zeus. And I'm thinking that the way that Achilles honors Zeus is much different than Agamemnon's view. Hmm. And, They're different. Yeah, and yeah. also that it become it looks like Achilles in response to Phoenix's statement is saying, Look, I have Zeus now as my surrogate uh, father at this point. Rather than you. Although rather than rather than you, Phoenix, Phoenix. although you have been my mortal surrogate mother. I'm, I'm not sure how your conclusion okay. follows that. Yeah, I didn't do that. Wait a minute. No, that Zeus is the surrogate parent for Achilles. Right. Seems like at this point, <clears> he's <throat> honor, I think I am by Zeus's justice. And it seems like he was. He's, he's reached a new. Parent. No, no. How would that follow that then he would be paralleling with Phoenix as being a surrogate? Oh. Try something now, okay? Hold, hold on to that. All right, same point. Um, he's aware that his mother, a goddess, finish it. Got Zeus to, to fulfill uh, his his obligation to her and by honoring him. As far as he's concerned, that shows. That he's concerned, I'm honored by Zeus's justice. Mm. He's getting off on this. What? He's getting off on this. Like, like, well, it's his turn. And it's his view of justice that's now at stake. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't he yeah. call it yeah. out? Uh, now he's up. Uh, right? Yeah. yeah, he follows that up with uh, <clears throat> loyalty should array you at my side, giving pain. To him who gives me pain. Right. Why? Is that a very long? Yeah. That's a sense of justice. Right? Phoenix. Right after his response to Phoenix. 
and that suggests then the kind of justice he's talking about is what? Oh, it's a... I'm going to pay back pain for pain, blah, blah. He's got a scale, doesn't he? You do this to me, and I'll do that to you. That's justice. It's uh, Paul and Marcus, right? It's a marketing, yeah. Paul and Marcus, yeah. But right? It's not even it's your friends and things. It's balanced. Like, it's worse. See, like, what happened to Achilles isn't as bad yeah, as what's going to happen to these guys. Doesn't that follow, though, from his mother's deal with Zeus? You owe me one, right? Mm -hmm. We now have to pay off past debts, right? right. right. That's the way he's saying it. Yeah, yeah. So, not strictly an eye for an eye, but well, justice. Got to keep the balance. Yeah. That's what that is. That what? He's giving evidence, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He even describes it. Of course, you might say that his view of being dishonored by Agamemnon outshines everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, would that follow? Watch now. Would that follow if he believes this? No. If Achilles believes this, would that account in some way for his rage against Agamemnon for dishonoring him. <laughs> He's dishonoring a man who is being honored by Zeus. God, God, uh, by the highest God. Yeah, and, and uh, he wants Agamemnon to recognize that, bow to him, and Agamemnon wants him to bow to him. Because when you dishonor me, you're dishonoring Zeus. Zeus. And that's Right, that's knowledge. He who is being honored by the ju justice of Zeus. Hmm. Well, I was just putting it in the family context, right? Like, how dare you dishonor, right, my appearance of knowing and virtue, you know? Right? Like, uh, yeah. yeah. Or, it goes in a different direction. Get everyone with the page. He, he says that uh, page. page number 219. 219. Everybody, and hold eight, it for a moment. Eight, eight hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Same book, right? Go ahead. For he says that for Zeus, who views the white world, held his sheltering hand over the city, and her troops have taken heart. You shall not see, he says, the last hour that awaits tall Leon. For Zeus, who views the white world, held his sheltering and over the city, and her troops have taken heart. That means that this is going to go on and on to immortality. <sighs> Where are, are, are you in book nine? I'm in book nine, mm -hmm. uh, page 290. Oh, oh I don't you know, got the yeah. wrong book. Yeah, who, who's speaking? Uh, that, that was Achilles' answer. To? To, um, it's, Prince of Jesus made the reply. It starts over here in 820. I don't know if that's what, yeah. yeah. That's I just read that and no, I not. saw that it gives uh, insight in terms it's of not. the power that um, that Achilles uh, gives to Zeus because Zeus is, is uh, to him, um, he views the wide world. Now, I, never mind. I no, 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 no. I'm just trying to find uh, where you're at. I'm, I'm on. Uh, well, this is the this book. Yeah. What's the little number on the side? Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Yeah. My, my chapter ends at seven ten. And, yeah. Mine and, too. And I'm on the <laughs> nine. Then yours is probably more like yeah. six seven five. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. It's book nine. 2.30? I just... I, <laughs> Maybe it's not... It doesn't Here, you know what? Can I see that real quick? I just saw something There's there. There's just such a dissimilarity of language. Yeah. See, it says line 647. Yeah. 
Actually, it would be halfway there, though. And he's giving him uh, a lot of pain to, to Zeus because, well, I don't, I don't, never mind. It would be one 677. I saw, I saw something beautiful there, but it doesn't mean. 677. Not that this is speaking in Russian, but it didn't this copy. He's talking that uh, this is speaking about um, what uh, our key is, the answer is, and it's giving him all the pain. You shall not see, he says, the last hour that awaits tall Liam, for Zeus who views the white world held his sheltering hand over the city, and her troops have taken heart. That was Achilles' answer. Giving all that pain to, to Zeus that is. No, this is Odysseus speaking. This is Odysseus' version of Achilles' answer. Uh, but, yeah, right, but the right. Odysseus version of Achilles. Right. But he's saying that, 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 that the, la the last hour that awaits Carl the Now, mm -hmm. uh, maybe I don't have it all together, but I saw something beautiful. That. <laughs> <laughs> something beautiful now. Egmar, Egmar. Yeah, I don't see that point. Well, something beautiful. Uh, so we were on the, the, the points about, uh, right, how is uh, Achilles uh, viewing himself in regards to Zeus's justice, right? Right. So, so how would you connect what you're reading here with that point, aside from whether or not it's beautiful? That justice will, will that justice will um, comes from 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 Zeus. Only Zeus has the power to give justice, an eye for an eye, the way it's described in here. So Not, you find this backs up. What? Yeah. The, that point. Okay. Yeah, see, we have to see whether or not that is the yeah. justice of Zeus. Mm. The question is not whether that's Zeus's justice, that's his understanding of his problem. We will have to see whether or not that is the justice of Zeus. Right. Yeah. Especially since he loses his cousin right? and treats outrageously yeah. Hector's body yeah. and, and all those other yeah. things, play the blames about him after this point. He doesn't. Uh, yeah. Okay, all right. By the way, before we quit, before we quit, why did Zeus owe so much to Thetis? What the heck is going on there? What does that mean? He saved them from uh, mutiny. The theological insurrection. What? Yes. <laughs> uh, an insurrection. A, a, a revolt against the power by the gods. Yes. They're tied, tied up. Oh. Uh, okay. uh, or is that just the appearance level? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, must the gods in Homer grow? Is there a growth among the gods as there is a growth among men? If so, then, how is he picturing Zeus? Mm -hmm. right. In book eight, what does he do? He says, you know what? You gods, knock it off. No more interfering with my designs, right? Mm -hmm. He's taking charge. He didn't take charge up to this point. Oh, that's right, he didn't take charge. Well, was there an earlier stage that showed him? It puts hair in Jack, but early on. But, but, okay. uh, but yeah, yeah, he's, he's, it's weird because he's letting things, letting things happen that look like they might jeopardize his plan, but they don't. And he's able to, does he kind of, subtly manipulates things in the early chapters. Jesus, Hera, and Athena. Right? Like, oh, look, you're just doing nothing for your, your guys down there, you know, while uh, Aphrodite's helping out at Paris. Uh, is there an earlier scene where he takes charge? I have no idea. Achilles? I don't know. Achilles showed up. Um, Zeus. I, I, 
I have one question about chapter uh, nine, and then we can leave it for another day or something. <laughs> I'm just curious why um, heart, an honor, heart, an anger, heart, and um, um, a pride uh, repeat themselves over 20 times in this chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, one would be a lower tongue of the word heart. But other than that, it's like. Um, There are different forces that work in this chapter than there are in the ones on honor and um, and honor and excellence. This one's uh, kind of a, a weedy little thing. And uh, if you'd let me read five, just for fun. Um, let's see. Here's a good one. Scepter he gave you honor above. Uh, with the scepter he gave you honor beyond all, and but he did not give you heart. Uh, and of all power, this is the greatest. And then he says, uh, giving, you, giving way to your proud heart's anger. Look, look sir, yeah. you can take that thing you just mentioned and line them up and find out how each of these people understand the word of honor. And heart. Honor. Heart. That runs through the whole book, different views of honor. Mm. Mm. Certainly different between Achilles, Agamemnon, and and uh, Peter, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Another one. Hey, All right. Here. We push. What should we keep in mind uh, regarding uh, the next chapters? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you want us to look out for? Or? Yeah, Keep we'll be a little on. more prepared when we come in. This is the first time we've understood. Achilles' problem, and we got his surrogate mother. We got his principal pathologos. I am the recipient of the justice of Zeus. Principal pathologos. Right, that's a principal pathologos. Now, what? Now, that's what happened. Can he get out of it? Mm. Very good. Right. What happens in the tenth? The tenth is easy, it's a beautiful story. Which is, without their hero, how are they gonna fight the war? Are they gonna retreat or stay? They stay to fight. How, what arguments? What is the role of the gods? Right, first through 10 and 11. Should do 12, they fit, but okay, 10 and 11. Yeah. Thank you, fun. Yeah, thank you.